All right. So, um, alligator mom, I never asked you, but it sounds like obvious where you got that name from, but I still need to ask you in case people <laughs> wonder. Maligator mom. I assume you have a few Malinois, right? So tell us a little bit about uh, your dogs and um, how you got with that, you know, name. Yeah. And why you made a channel about being a Maligator mom. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I have four. I have four Malinois. Yeah. And a lot of people think that the Maligator mom portion of that name would play into the fact that I have multiple Malinois, but it actually doesn't. Mm -hmm. Um, the reason I went with that was because I actually am also a mother of four children. Oh, wow. And so I felt like there was nobody out there in the space that I could identify with being, um, you know, interested in this breed and training and protection dogs, but also being a mom and playing the role of mother and having four children and, and being able to have those two worlds coexist. It felt like that wasn't possible and I didn't see anybody else doing it. Um, and so that's kind of where the name play comes in. Wow. But, um, okay. I got let into, us, let us huh? read that a little bit. You got four kids and a bunch I of, do. How, how do you handle it? No, I mean, I got one kid <laughs> and you know, one, two crazy Malamas. That's more than plenty. How do you do that? How do you do that? That's phenomenal. That's I mean, um, so some days I don't, some days, some days I don't <laughs> want to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. Um, it is a lot. It, it, it is a lot. And it's definitely a lifestyle, right? Like, mm -hmm. like it has changed every aspect of my day. So, um, getting into this breed, I think I was well suited for it because I already managed a big family. I already knew about structure and routine and making things happen that way. And so this kind of yeah. was natural for me in that, in that fit, it was a good fit for me. I took to it, I think pretty easily, but, um, but yeah, four kids, um, four Malinois it is a lot. It's a lifestyle. It is all day, every day. It is not wow. easy. Um, but I mean, it's also an incredible source of joy. So, you know, have, my younger kids are really, mm -hmm. um, they're interested in the dogs. My, my two older kids, I think were a little older that they just weren't what age as into it. What age are they? Oh, so, okay. My oldest daughter is 20. And then oh, I have an 18 year old son and then a 13 year old son and an eight year old daughter. Oh, okay. So the cool. older two, not, not so much into the dogs. They were teenagers into their own thing. Yeah. Um, but the younger two like working with the dogs. And so it's something we get to do together and mm -hmm. it's become a lot of fun. So. Wow. Wow. I mean, still, still, I don't know how you even do that. You know, how do you give everybody <laughs> the attention they need? Cause the Malibas, they want your attention all day. Right. Oh yeah. So then the kids, then, you know, when you're doing the kids, you're thinking, Oh, that's right. I still have to feed the Malibas. I still have to train them a little bit. It's I constant. still have to get them working. Yeah. Do you find mm -hmm. peace sometimes? What What is your, like, where does your free space go to when you have some time? You're like, no, it's not going to be dogs and kids. What is your go-to then? Um, so trying to find a moment in the day with kids and Malinois is really hard to do. But I really enjoy, I mean, this is going to sound kind of weird, but I really just enjoy getting out for, like, they're the dog's potty breaks and I'll extend them for like 10 or 15 minutes. So I don't have to go back inside and deal with anything. <laughs> and I'll just sit sometimes and just watch them, you know, and just let yeah. them and just kind of mm -hmm. enjoy the outside and, and just kind of take in a minute with the mm -hmm. dogs without training or working or worrying about anything else. And so I try yeah. to just take advantage of those everyday little moments. We all have them. Yeah, we just don't but... recognize them. You, you would assume somebody as busy as you are, and I can already imagine, right? Because like I said, I have a few and a, and a kid. But on top of that, you run a channel on TikTok and you post videos, I don't know how many how many times a week, but you got over 700,000 followers. I mean, yeah. that's not only amazing. I know what it takes to run a social media channel and of that magnitude that you have. That comes on top of it. Right. Because you got to edit yeah. the video. You got to come up with the idea. You got to post it. You got to, you know, react to people. So yeah. that's also something you do. Yeah. Yeah. Do I mean, 
it, it is a lot. I do manage it all completely myself. It's always me yeah. responding to you. It's not somebody else. It's always me on there. Um, yeah. But I think, I think it's been manageable because a lot of that is just very organic. I'm just showing what I'm doing, how things that are relating to me, funny clips I might capture that I can turn into content. Like it's all very organic. Yeah. It's not a lot of yeah. like on purpose stuff, you know, it's just like, this is my mm -hmm. shit show of a life, you know, and like if you identify with it, great, you know. Yeah, so the first video, the first clip that I saw of you was, I think it was kind of some kind of parody, but I, I didn't know at that point. So I saw you coming on screen in a TikTok video, and then you bought a $100,000 puppy, you said, I think, I believe it was. <laughs> yeah. And then it was like, yeah, it knows how to do everything. And I was like, wow, it's a, like, what a stereotype of a dumb person getting into you know, a Malinois and, and assuming, but of course you were just making fun of it, but I didn't know at that point, but definitely very relatable because, you know, sometimes yeah. people, uh, you know, when you go on the street and people, the question that they ask about, you know, a Malinois, they don't see it as a working dog. Sometimes they think it's the, the, the average dog or the opposite. They think it's like the ultimate weapon. So there's so many misconceptions about dogs, especially working dogs. And uh, yeah, I thought it, I could really relate to it. And I was like, Oh, then of course I saw, oh, well, there's somebody that actually knows about dogs and just, you know, <laughs> in front of it. So I could see where, uh, you know, you have people recognizing your content and liking it. So I don't know, how long have you been running this channel? Because 700,000, that's a lot, a lot of followers. How um, long have you been doing? I think, I think I got onto TikTok two years ago, maybe two and a half mm -hmm. years ago. Like the so, Corona? You know, corona hit? Huh? When Corona came, then we're like, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. okay. um, so it's definitely been like mm -hmm. an evolution, right? And and it's it's been a grind. Like TikTok is is not easy. Um, it's it's very brutal. <laughs> like people people either either love you or they hate you. And um, they tell you when they hate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, really? uh, yeah. I I've gotten a lot of crap. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I, I think a lot of people that put themselves out there on social media, yeah. they do, you know, you're just going to get people that don't like what you're doing or who take a, a clip completely out of context um, or don't bother to look at what you're actually presenting, you know, as far as content is concerned, just focused on one clip that they don't like, um, yeah. you know, you, you get a lot of crap for sure. But I think that mm -hmm. that overall people have been able to identify with with what I'm sharing. Because again, I don't feel like there's a lot of people out there sharing my experience, my side of what I have to offer. Um, like, like when I was trying to get into the breed, I wasn't seeing a lot of people out there who had kids, right? Or had like these busy lifestyles. How do you incorporate these dogs into all of that? Is it even possible? I didn't see anybody out there doing it. And no. it actually prevented me from getting into the breed for years before I wanted to, because I've been doing all my research, you know, like I wanted to make the right decision. Um, and I was afraid to, to actually do it because I didn't see anybody else out there doing it. And um, there was a lot of, um, I have to be careful how I word this. I don't want to piss anybody off, but th there's a lot of gatekeeping. Um, there's a lot of elitist attitude, I think, around no. the board. Oh yeah, um, yeah. No, yeah. Actually, I, th I think we should talk about this little bit of controversy. Don't don't hold back. I think it's a very interesting yeah. topic. I think you know going in, going into the working dog community or world, whatever they call it, is a huge step. And I'll tell you a little bit of my experience. Mm -hmm. When I entered the club, the first time, Belgian Ring Club, and they they just look at you like, what what is he what does he want like? Yeah. And then they just give you a glance like, ah. And then they just continue and nobody says, hey, how are you doing? Or, uh, hey, can we help you with something? Do you like what you see? Are you interested in this? No, 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 no. It was none of that. You yeah. have to like, hey, guys, can I ask a question? And then they would go like, what? What up? And then uh, that's, that's something really interesting you do. You, you know, I also want to have one of those dogs. And then it's like they ignore you almost. That was like yeah. my first experience. Like, and then, you know, I was at the police and uh, I wasn't at the canine unit and I didn't know anyone at the canine unit for that reason. Because if you would meet somebody yeah. at the canine unit, I, I saw them on the street, but they didn't really look at it, some uh, people. It, it like It's like they were untouchable almost. Like it, it seemed 
like it's hard to connect with these people. And and still, I mean, hearing you say this on the other side of the planet uh, in the U.S., I live in Europe. I do feel like you have the same feeling like, oh, this community is, is kind of closed and like you say, gatekeepers. So share me a little bit about, uh, share us a little bit about the experience that you have about the gatekeeping. What was it your first thought on, oh, how do I get in this or what is, what is wrong with these people? Why is yeah. it so, tell me a little it's, bit about that. It's, it's definitely a very closed off group, I think. Yeah. Um, I think that, I think that a lot of the reason behind that is that um, having a Malinois, I think to these, to a lot of these more elitist type people, these gatekeepers is something that makes them very special. Mm, I and see. so they don't, they don't really want to open up, you know, mm. if we're, if you are special, we're all special. Right. So it's, it's kind of oh, like, this is something that right, makes me right. really special. And they yeah. want to guard yeah. that secret. Um, they don't want to see other people succeed. And, I think, you know, there, there's a, there's a few things at play there, honestly, you know, I, I do, I have met some people who have this gatekeeping attitude who I actually think that their heart is in the right place. I think that they see these dogs being overbred, um, finding their ways, you know, into the hands of people who, who should not have them, who objectively should not have them. Um, and so their heart's in the right place, but they have a bad way of coming across. The community is not very welcoming. That was my experience. It was not a welcoming community. So let, let, let me ask you now, because it's it's really true. And I think people that are watching this can make a comment, like what their first experience was. Was it good or was it bad? Like, hey, I want to get into the working yeah. dog. I'd love to hear from you guys how that went. Like for me, it was also like, oh, this is going to be tough. And that's why I started studying online and started studying YouTube and started yeah. studying, you know, or read whatever you could get into because I did feel there was like this huge gap between somebody as a complete novice and then somebody has experience. Hey, you want to share some of that knowledge you have? That wasn't really going to happen. That's what I felt. So I had to self-study. But um, I just saw a clip of you uh, on, um, I don't know, was it TikTok or Instagram, maybe both, where you were making comments about the new movie, uh, Dog, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's what it's called. I haven't seen it yet. Have you seen it? Mm -hmm. I have, yeah. Oh, okay. And was it good? I thought it was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I liked yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Because sometimes when I look at dog movies now, before I used to enjoy them, now I was like, ah, oh, they put like, contracts on them. You know, the dog's not really doing this. Like, like oh, yeah, it's a whole different feeling now that you train dogs. But yeah. I did hear you say, like, hey, watch out. So are you also protecting a little bit the Malinois? Or are you just, what was your reason to do that? Yeah, I mean, I, I do, like I said, I can identify with, with some of that. That's why I was saying, like, I don't think their heart's in the wrong place. I, I can identify with that feeling of, of gatekeeping a little bit, right? Because we do yeah. see a lot of these dogs, especially, I don't know if it's what it's like in Europe, but here in the States, we see a lot of these dogs in shelters. Um, a lot of these dogs just get into the hands of people who don't understand what it takes and, and it's just a bad situation. So I do identify with a level of that gatekeeping that protective like hey you know like these dogs aren't your average dog they do require you know a little bit more um and so i identify with that but you know at the same time it's 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 trying to walk this fine line between you know i i actually think a lot of people can have a malinois and be very successful with it and yeah. i hate yeah. to see those people missing out on that experience yeah but because of the unwelcoming community yeah, like somebody I just see in the comments, they did a lot of research. I was thinking I wasn't good enough. You, you can imagine how many people would think, oh, I'm not good enough yeah. for a mammal, right? That was I'm me. Too slow, yeah. I'm too stiff. I'm too you know, like, inexperienced and all that kind of stuff. And at the end of the day, you know, I, I started from minus zero also, since if you're afraid of dogs and then you have to go train a Malawa, I mean, that's yeah. a, a little bit of a problem. And it definitely proved to be a problem at first because I, the very first dog that I got uh, was an, actually an adult. And, um, that didn't work out really well. I looked at it and yeah, and I was like, oh shit, I'm afraid of this dog. Gotta return it. So yeah, yeah that was my first experience. So yeah, <laughs> you can imagine that what that does to your self-confidence. But yeah. um yeah, think it, thinking of it um as you know, the uh, going into dog sports, I was just having a conversation with an elite trainer, like one of the best in the world. And um <clears throat> that person told me, hey, uh, when I have you know a litter or when I would have you know top puppies. I'd never have somebody pick, you know, a very high drive puppy as an inexperienced handler. And I said, well, why, why not? Well, of course, because it's going to go wrong. They're going to mess it up or they, yes, but you know, 
it depends, right? Because yeah. some people might have, you know, the ability to develop skills in a rapid time. And when they have a really good puppy, this puppy will actually support them in developing the skills right. that they need. And it's going to be great for them if they can make a few mistakes and the dog's not really going to suffer all that much from it because, you know, the lower the drive of the dog doesn't leave you a whole lot of margin to mess up because right, then yeah. dog will be completely fed up. So I kind of disagreed with that. But, you know, that mindset does exist, you know, with almost everyone, every, everyone that breeds, would you give the top, you know, high drive dog to somebody inexperienced? Your first gut feeling is no, of course not. But then again, well, you know, you have to assess, you know, the, the, the handler or the trainer that wants to get that puppy also like you know what kind of engagement are they going to put in what kind of time like what can they already show like just you know moving wise and stuff like that so how do you how do you see you got to talk to them i believe you got to give them at least a chance to to understand what it would be and you know from that conversation i would rather than have that puppy go to somebody completely new with a good a guideline or with a program then yeah. going to somebody experienced that's supposed to know everything and they think they can handle it and then they're going to mess it up because that's what they've always done in the past as well. But they do have the experience. Yeah. You see where I'm going? So, yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's I mean, a, a higher, a higher drive dog can, you know, even, even in the hands of a novice trainer or handler, you know, owner, whatever, whoever gets this dog, I mean, they're, they're more, they can just recover easier. Right. So like, so like, so like if you mess up with your training or you're, you know, you're struggling because you're a first time trainer or a handler or owner, um, the higher drive dog is, I, in my opinion, going to be able to recover a lot quicker. You know? Yeah. Well, that's like, a fact. You, you can honestly dog. make some more yeah. mistakes with that dog than you can with one of the lower drive dogs, in my yeah. opinion. The, so. I think that the problem is also that people, they invest in the dog because buying a dog these days is not that cheap anymore. Back in the day, the mom was for the poor people. Uh, maybe you don't know, but here in this country where they were bred, it was a poor man's dog because the dog was so strong and never got sick. You know, it was used to, you know, to farm, to help you farm and, and you know, pull stuff and all that kind of stuff. So it only got, you know, some bread off the table. You didn't have to feed it anything besides what the leftovers were. And you never had to go to the vet because it never got sick. It was a really a poor man's dog, right? Interesting. These days, these days, a Malawa can be pretty expensive, right? You go into the top lines, the top breeders, the first picks, the you know, the champions, all that kind of stuff. And and then they buy this little puppy, make all these investments, but then they don't actually know where to start from then on. So that's when it starts, and then they start looking for YouTube and all that kind of stuff. And that's where it goes downhill because yes. I truly believe, and I, I'm a big YouTube fan. Like I'll, I go to YouTube for a lot of things, but I don't go to YouTube for dog training, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. There's so much, and actually yesterday I was just looking at a clip because it does show up in my feed sometimes of, you know, stuff like, you know, with a dog trainer. And then I, sometimes I can't help myself clicking it if, if it's somebody that has, you know, a lot of uh, coverage reviews. And then, uh, first of all, like this person was talking about, oh, the dog, I'll show you how to, the puppy needs to look you in the eye and stuff like that. It was a working dog, right? It's a pure working dog. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, of course, it all makes sense, right? All this viral influence of millions and thousands of views that this person gets and, and people that don't know anything will go, of course, that's what it is. Because look, the high, the big guys, the channels, that's what they say we got to do. And nothing changes, right? They just do what somebody else does. And then, of course, it's already a watered down version from what this guy is doing. And then this guy thinks, hey, I saw this on YouTube. It should be like that. And then it kind of trickles down to, you know, so everybody's just doing something and they don't have a, a real vision, I believe. Mm -hmm. So you make all the investments. They, they make the, they get the puppy. They fly it in even from, you know, across the world. And then... Nothing happens. Or yeah. they leave it in the hands of somebody that they don't even know they can trust. Right? right. Because nope. everybody these days, if you have a dog, already means you have a credential. You already have a dog. Oh, great. You didn't get bit by the dog. Oh, right. you're now a dog trainer. You see, everybody that has a dog feels entitled to give dog training advice. So you yes. can imagine somebody coming in with a nice puppy and somebody that somebody knows nothing. And then that somebody, the other guy has a dog, he's going to try to push his advice to the person that never had a dog. The worst yeah. worst idea ever, guys. Don't don't go for that because yeah. it's really not great. Um, yeah. But anyways, not only you know we're talking about the gatekeeping, how hard it is to get into community, but you're also a woman and a blonde woman. How? Would you <laughs> well, I mean, not <laughs> quite. <laughs> I mean, what, what what was that like? Did you feel like there was extra? You know, was it extra hard as a woman to get into that community or how, how is it perceived? Like, what's your experience on being a woman in this, let's still face it, a little bit of a man's world? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
it, it was difficult at first. And my, my journey into researching the breed started with, I went to uh, global protection canine services out here in Tennessee. So shout out to them. And, um, I volunteered. I just wanted to be around the dogs. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't know anything about these dogs. Everything I see online is terrifying and telling me I'm absolutely the total, I check every box for being the wrong person to have this dog. Um, but right. I was like, I don't, I don't think so. I think I can do this. So I volunteered to go out there and spend time with the dogs. Cause I just wanted to be in their space. I just wanted to see these dogs move and work and understand what it took and watch other people and watch the training and, and just be a part of it. And so that volunteering turned into me cleaning kennels, right? I'm just out there stupid shit, <laughs> mopping floors, cleaning oh kennels, just so I could be in their space. Wow. Um, and but doesn't that, then, Malgator mom, sorry, can I call you that? I mean, that's yeah, yeah. Or K, so, it doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't that contribute to the elite mindset oh you got to clean some kennels to be part of this <laughs> <laughs> you're going right you, know, you mentioned it, but then you're, you're helping it you know keep a yeah keeping alive. I, think, I think it was just it was my way of trying to to give something back for being allowed to just come out there and spend hours out there being in everybody's way you know mm -hmm. it's like at least i can come out here and offer something and be productive and also you know kind of break into this club, you know, like do my, put in my work and break into the club. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and that kind of, it's so it slowly progressed right from that to like, Oh, uh, Kay, can you grab Zia out of the kennel? Can you grab diesel out of the kennel? Can you go get so-and-so? And that turned into me getting to be a little bit more hands-on. Right. And so slowly that progressed, but in that time, the men that were working in that same space, um, you know, I would, I would experience things like if I was asked to go get a dog, um, and I'd go in and I'd be putting the collar on the dog. I've literally had men come in and, and move me out of the way here. I <laughs> let me get her. I can get her. I'll, I'll help her. Really? And I'm like, I don't need your help to take this dog out of the kennel, you oh. know, but, but there's, but there was just like this attitude of, you know, you, you can't do this. Like mm -hmm. you, you can't do this. Like, why, why are you even here? You're not capable of this. Um, and that was prevalent, not only in person, but also online, you know, like it, it was everywhere. It was like, well, you just have you no business. Example? Online. Can you give us an example online on what they were saying that, you know, it was. Kind yeah. Of yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people thought that because I was a mother with some younger children, like my youngest daughter, I think was like four or mm -hmm. so when I got into this, um, it was like, you you as a mother, you're being a bad mother by having these types of dogs around your children. It's dangerous. It's wrong. You shouldn't be doing it. No. That was the biggest thing was because I had young kids, people, mostly men were telling me you shouldn't have these dogs because you have children. You can't be a good mom and have these dogs around your kids. Um, that was the biggest pushback. And then, um, you know, you also open yourself up to just a bunch of entitling comments, I think, from a lot of men who see you on social media and feel like they can comment on certain aspects of your life, whether it's um, things that you do or the clothes that you're wearing or the way you did your hair that day or, you know, anything like that, right? And I don't feel like, and at least it's not my experience, yeah. I see other men in this space dealing yeah. with those types of comments and that type of interaction. No, um, no, you're right. So, you know, it, it, it's definitely different. And it is very off-putting, but honestly, I mean, I think as a woman, you're so, you're, you're, unfortunately, you're so used to it. That so you, you just, you know, I just put my head down and go. You're saying it's part of it. You know, it's an elite, right? You got to clean some shit first. Then you got to take all the heat because you're a woman. They're going to make yeah. all these comments. Uh, were there also sexual comments or was it not that going that oh, far? Oh, absolutely. Like... <laughs> If you think I haven't gotten the unwarranted pick, you know, like that we all get as women. I mean, I've gotten a lot of, of absolutely wow. disgusting comments and things from people um, online. Yeah, wow. it's not. Which, it's not is, which is the most notorious channel to get those things? TikTok, I guess, then? No, Instagram. Definitely oh, Instagram. Instagram. Really? Yeah. Oh, I had no yeah. clue. Oh, okay. Yep. So Instagram got some dirty people. People are very it. bold. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
I thought Instagram was more was more easy. I think <laughs> yeah, so. I think, nice I think you're on Instagram. So yeah, uh, good to know. Good to know. So uh, yeah, uh, Emma, what's your uh, commenting? I get this even uh, nine months with Ruth. I throw off all my energy into our training. Yeah, I, she doesn't get any pics. No, though. no pics. No. <laughs> yeah, not yet. Not yet. Not so yet. Uh, I mean, yeah. we don't want to give people the wrong ideas here. So um, all right. Um, 700,000 followers again you don't just get gain those over a week or two like yeah. where, when did you feel like hey people are really getting interested in my content the videos that you're pushing out and what kind of videos did you feel were doing were getting the most success were they training videos talking videos because i think a lot of people are struggling to get their channels up and some of the reasons is because everything's oversaturated right yes and tiktok uh, is is you know it's all over the place uh, same with uh, Facebook. Or maybe Facebook is a little bit on the, you know, going backwards a little bit in comparison to the others. But especially Instagram. Instagram is a tough place to gain followers uh, yeah. because I also saw there's a discrepancy between between the followers you have on uh, TikTok and the ones you have on Instagram. So what do you feel like Instagram? What do they want from you? Why why is it so big for you the TikTok channel? I think I think that um, Instagram is just you know it. Instagram is really hard to grow on. Like you said, I don't think I have Instagram totally figured out. I don't, I, I personally think that Instagram and Facebook are slowly dying. I feel like um, oh, wow. <laughs> people really want, I mean, I mean, we see it now, right though, because we saw TikTok take off and then you've got Instagram and Facebook and they had to come out with reels just to compete, just to stay relevant. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so I really see those two apps. I don't think they're going anywhere soon, but I do see them slowly fading out. It's time for something new. I think TikTok hit the scene. People are kind of sick of still images. We want content. We want video. I'm, I'm um, going to tell you something. I'll get it wrong. Cause I started a channel 17 years ago. Of course you continue right after that. Just don't want to forget about this little intervention. Yeah. Um, I started 17 years ago, right? Yeah, 16, 17 years ago on uh, Facebook. And maybe the people that were on Facebook at that time, maybe they remember that the feed you used to get, you could choose between pictures and videos, right? And I always pressed videos because I was only interested yeah. in videos. But the whole problem was not many people at that time were posting videos because nobody had like, you know, the camera and on right. the phone and stuff like that. So, and they changed it. Now you could see like when somebody's going to the bathroom, he made this post, you could see it, right? When somebody's posting a picture, you don't want to see. So basically, and I would, I would remember that day when they changed that. So you couldn't like select what you wanted to see. And I only wanted to see videos. Mm -hmm. See, so actually 17 years ago, that was something existing. And for some reason, they didn't push it through. And now it's come back with TikTok in, in, a, in, a, in a form that is so easy. You just swipe up. It's all it's a, it's all vertical, right? It's nice yeah. because your whole phone is filled up. But to be honest, the vertical from a from an editor perspective, from a yes. filmmaking perspective, it is completely. <laughs> your eyes are horizontal for a reason, right? Yeah. You should see th you should see things horizontally, right. and now everything's vertical. And uh, well, you know, it, it is what it is now. But anyways, continue. I just wanted to say that Facebook back in the day had that option 17 years ago where you could yeah. click videos. And you could only see the stream of videos, which was awesome. Yeah. But uh, they didn't do that. And uh, yeah, I do feel like Facebook has gotten slow also in responsiveness and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it, it's a little bit uh, hard. I, to think, I think it's it's different generations of people as mm -hmm. well that are using these. You know, we I think our older generation of people are still on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like like my father, for example, in his elderly and was on Facebook. You know, like all the time lived on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I don't go to Facebook unless I have to, like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm not a big fan of Facebook or the interactions there. I, it's just Facebook to me feels very um, just toxic. Like, it, like I don't, I don't leave Facebook feeling good. All right. You know, okay. we to talk same about with this. Instagram. We had a little conversation, right? Um, for me, Facebook has not been, you know, a bad experience. I think, you know, it, Facebook had never had any issues with Facebook, but you have, and you've told me about it. And I was shocked yeah. because uh, I run a group, a discussion group. It has like, I don't know, 13, 14,000 people in it. Um, and uh, I, I, you know, people just put all sorts of stuff in there. Right. Mm -hmm. And now I just cleaned it up. You know, not everybody can just post whatever they want because it was getting out of hand. I was, you know, dirty videos. It was like sick videos. Was like, yeah. It was getting a mess. You, on the other hand, you also have a Facebook uh, group, yep. which is getting scrutinized 
like uh, on a daily basis. Could you explain a little bit what went on with your group and yeah. what the group um, before? So I, I, I have my Malligator Mom Facebook page, but then I started kind of like you're like you start a group, right? If anybody knows anything about Facebook, you can go and start a group and it can be private or public. Mine happens to be public and it's just mm -hmm. called the Belgian Malinois. It's got about 15,000 people in there and it's just a space. It's just a community space. There's not really anything special about it. It's just a place for people with Belgian Malinois to come and hang out and get tips and share, you know, whatever, right? Very basic group. Um, but it has been taken down, blocked, um, suspended. I'm not able to moderate my own comments. Facebook keeps stepping in and moderating and, and kicking people out or deleting comments or suspending members. Um, and I'm, I'm not exactly sure why. I don't know if there's people in that group that just kind of have it out for the balanced training community and they kind of right. found their way over there. But, um, okay. you know, it's, it's, you think it's an inside job. Somebody got I, in. I, and I feel like report. somebody's doing something. Yeah. I'm not, I'm really not sure why or how, but a lot of these posts get taken down and it's ridiculous. Like somebody will disagree. Right. And they'll say, Oh, that was a stupid thing to say. Well, that person gets that comment gets moderated by Facebook because it said stupid, the word stupid. No, I mean, really? And I'm no. like, what is going on? Um, and so a lot of posts will get taken down. Mm. I'm really not sure. But what I know is, is that not having the control over your own group like that to allow that community to really, truly evolve organically hinders the community from growing, um, which is why I left, I mean, I didn't leave it, but I've kind of been ignoring the Facebook group and I started the Discord group because Discord is a private server. Oh. And so you don't have to worry about the yeah. Facebook police coming in and, and moderating the anything. Police. <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about your event because you got something big to announce in a second. So, but anyways, yeah. I just wanted to chime in here when Lisa and Miller are saying, oh my God, the Belgian Malinois group, is that your group, by the way? It's pet owners versus working dog owners. Is that your group yeah. you're referring to? Yeah. Really? That's how we get. Mm -hmm. I think that that's very, very true. I think that's a great description of what's going on, especially online. You know, you see a lot of people who have mm -hmm. Malinois more as pets and don't understand them as mm -hmm. the working breed that they are. And so those two communities clash. All right. So. Time. And when you say clash, are we talking about methodology then? Be like the more positive approach versus the e-collar users of the working dogs and stuff like that? Are we talking that kind yeah, of? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think a lot of the pet owners, um, you know, I'll get comments about they don't like the fact that I crate my dogs. Oh, it's so cruel to crate your dog. That's so mean. Um, or you use an e-collar and that's, you know, that's abusive or a prong collar. That's abusive. Um, and that's that's kind of the the pet dog mentality versus the working dog mentality where we see these things as beneficial tools. It's part of good structure. It's part of training. It's part, you know, um, and they can't, they cannot seem to find common ground. Um, no, no, I, th I think, you know, and I addressed that with Larry also in a, one of the previous mm -hmm. podcasts, uh, Larry Cron uh, wrote a book about e-collars. So shout out to uh, Larry. But um what happens is because we just talked about YouTube, YouTube has a lot of huge channels also on dog training, right? Yeah. Those are not the typical working dog channels. We're talking about channels about just training dogs, pet dogs, right? They yeah. have the most influence in the entire world. If you would sum up all the big names, all the big trainers from Caesar Milan to, I don't know a whole lot of them, but anyways, let's say you have all these channels lined up. And they would form the backbone of YouTube's free advice on dog training. For sure, you're going to have a complete different blueprint than about working dogs, for sure. Yeah. So yeah. that now is our basic foundation, right? It's all about pets. The working dog community is so small, it's marginal compared to, yeah. compared to them, right? So it is kind of normal that people lean towards, if I would ask my own family and and they know what I do, but if they wouldn't know what I do, I think they would feel the same. Like, hey, why are you creating dogs? And why are you wearing all these special collars? And why would you have to use remotes to have a dog? I mean, I can't see from a you know a, from their stand of view that oh, well, what are you guys doing? Why is all that necessary? Because they don't have the necessity to control 
an animal with that kind of drive that it has a, it needs mm -hmm. to perform also when it has a task when it has to compete when it has to do its police job whatever so i could see that there was this problem but where do you feel that this this is it pure hate that on the facebook group that you run like I I think, yeah, and I think I think it just comes from the disconnect of people who might have found themselves to be the owner of a lower drive Malinois, mm -hmm. who have a completely different different experience with their Malinois mm -hmm. than also. someone who has a very high drive Malinois. And I know the difference because I have each, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Like Riot, for example, is a is a I would consider him a medium to low drive Malinois, and then mm -hmm. I have. Fury and Storm, who are at a hundred all the time, right? Yeah. Very, very different dogs. So oh, yeah. if you are someone who has, you know, even though they're Malinois, very different. So if you're someone who has a pet Malinois in the sense that this is a lower drive dog, you don't necessarily have goals for this dog. You don't really work this dog in the sense of, you know, you're not really offering any kind of genetic fulfillment because maybe you have one of those low drive mouths that really yeah. is well suited to be a pet, an active pet. Yeah. They yeah. exist. They're out there, you know? Yeah. Um, and those people don't understand that their experience with that mouth <laughs> is not the experience of people with high drive mouths. And so those communities are, are just not able to connect. Well, I have a Malinois and I don't have to put him in a crate. Yeah. Well, I agree with that. I agree. Good for you. You know, you don't push your stuff on everybody else. Right. So, yeah. You know, I just made a positive only class, but I'll tell you, yeah. it's, people might think, oh, you, you've seen the, you know, the dollar signs, right? Because why are you making a positive only class? Look, I've been spending over a decade, over a decade finding people or finding at least somebody that could do it with a high drive dog. And I'm talking like the hundred, the 100 ones. Yeah. yeah. And do competition. And get, you know, the clean outs, the recalls, like everything on point, as clean as it comes. It took me over a decade just to find one person like that. And yeah. also a person who could think outside the box of what they were doing with this dog. Because most of the time when you do find somebody that is very skilled and, and has, is, very, is very knowledgeable in this area, they only attach it to their craft and their sport, which could be, for example, AKC obedience or right. whatever it is. And they got their results and, and that's what it is. But somebody that can transcend over multiple sports, you know, basically a freestyle who could do it all with a high drive dog. It took me over a decade to find somebody like that. And I thought when I saw this person, I invited her here many, many times. We trained together. That was something special that I saw. I said, this, yeah. this deserves a platform. And that yeah. person never would have gotten the platform to showcase what she could do if it wasn't for me discovering her. Because mm -hmm. it just doesn't happen. If you would see somebody tomorrow at a club, I mean, you, can, you can't just say, I'm going to pick this person up and make a whole class around this person if you're not into making classes. So, you know, I just wanted to give something back for all the people, myself included, that always yeah. believe this is impossible without a tool. It is possible. But yeah. you do have to see things from a whole different perspective on skills as well. Like, it's mm -hmm. not just about I'm making a, con a conscious choice about using or not using. No, this is about, hey, when you choose not to, your vision on how you're going to approach things is very different. And when you time and you prioritize certain exercises into the repertoire of this dog is very different. So the plan of creating that, making that happen requires a lot of cognitive skills also. It's not just, a, hey, I'm not going to use any tools or yeah, I am going to use tools. It doesn't work like that. It's yeah. she, she is very, very smart and intelligent, a very smart person. And, you know, so people see it more black and white, but that's not what it is. Because if that's how she was, for example, she wouldn't come here with somebody who does use all these tools. So, but she mm -hmm. sees it for what it is. And she's like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm like, if you're vegan, for example, that doesn't mean you hate people that eat meat. You right. just make a conscious choice. Hey, I don't want to eat meat. So, but if you do, hey, I still respect you. No problem. Yeah. You can still be my best friend. That's how it should be. Yes. But these days, hey, you're against it or you're for or you're against it. And that just causes all this turmoil that I, I I just it just makes me sick reading all that. But that yeah. said, I was I was the same because I never thought somebody could really do it until I had to see it with my own eyes, and yeah. I was and I was very very I mean uh, uh, like I, I wanted to make sure that it was just as clean as I, I wanted it to be, and not not like kind of looking like it is with tools, but I wanted mm -hmm. to see the exact same results. It is possible. It's just a whole different approach. That's why you make right. this class. 
because you can't just go in there, you know, not thinking, not have a perfect plan to execute that kind of training. So uh, positive only. Yeah, it, it does. Like, it always intrigued me because I'm not a heavy tool user, regardless of what people think. There are yeah. some results that I wouldn't have today if it wasn't for the tool, but I'm not a heavy tool user. Especially yeah, neither am I. Dog. So, you know, I, I like it because it does give you a lot of options. But uh, I think what positive only does is it makes you think about the craft a lot and yeah. not so much about the tools. I never look at my backyard. If you ever come to people that I have been here, it's almost empty. So there's almost no props here. I, you know, I like to work with nothing. And, and that kind of goes into that same category. You work with nothing, just the basic stuff, right? The food or something that the dog is interested in, like a ball and stuff like that. And that's where you got to make it happen. So that means all the skill is on you, right? Yeah. You got to yeah. make everything happen. How do you make sure this dog is still going to have an out? How do you make sure this dog is not going, going into overdrive? When we're talking about the high drive ones, right? Yeah, they make yeah. mediocre ones. You could get, hey, and he snaps out of his drive. I've had a puppy like that. So he wanted to go grab a sleeve. He didn't know anything. His instincts are grab the sleeve. And I was like, not yet. Hey, and he's like, okay, then I won't. Right. A real, a real Malinois. He wouldn't care less of what you say, hey, yeah, yeah, or that. He's just going to pick right. that thing up and, and try to destroy it or, or run away with it. So yeah. here I'm going. There's many yeah. levels to dogs, what they are, and then, you know, what they will respond to. And the high drive ones, the, the super ones, that's going to be a really tough job handling those with a positive only program. Yes. So, yeah. and, I could, and I could see that the, the tool user will say it's impossible, just like myself, as the other people that have not used tools say, hey, I get the results, but the results are not on that level. You've not competed. You know, as I want to go to law enforcement, I do have to say that puts me on the fence a lot because law yeah. enforcement, when you're doing riot training, what are you doing? You're doing all, all this kind of stuff, and you have to also protect people from, uh, you know, getting injured. I mean, whatever it takes in, uh, in my opinion. So that would be a long run also. And you would expect too much from the canine handlers also to make sure that they have all that kind of skill also and those, those kind of cognitive insights on what to do. And the process does take longer, I got to tell you guys. So that was one of the first things that I saw was like, this process takes longer. I'm going to give you an example. Yeah. Uh, for example, people, if you have a high drive Malawa, would you like to do bite work? Yeah. Yeah, of course, because if you want to do protection work, for example, that's your goal. You want to go in there and do it. If you're pursuing positive only, for example, you can't just go in there and start doing this stuff. You mm -hmm. got to have some level of control before you get into the serious bite work. I mean, mm -hmm. as a pup, you can give it a sleeve and so. But once you've seen what it is and you recognize the talent and you've recognized there's the ability to do it, you got to go back into to the drawing board and make sure that when you come back you have some kind of control, some kind of high level control already. You see where it st starts going wrong? The yeah. traditional way is, of course, we're gonna go in with talented puppies and have them do the bite work and then, you know, go with the leashes and this, the, try, j just wrap your head around it. Going with a high drive dog to competition who's never had a leash on its neck in his life, a high drive dog. How comfortable would you feel? She goes into downtown <laughs> with the dog like packed with people and dogs and cars and buses. She's not going to. It's leave. really impressive. It is impressive. And like, hey, whatever, you, you got to stay here. I'm making a class. And then this class, people got to see what you do. That's just yeah. how I feel, you know. It's a, something extraordinary. I like it a lot. And I learn a lot myself, too. You know, it doesn't matter. Do you, like, do you feel like it's a lot of, do you feel like it's, it's that she is very gifted and talented? Do you feel like, it's achievable for the average handler to approach it this way? Or do you yeah. feel like she really has like a gift and a talent that most people might not be able to tap into? Very fair question. But I feel exactly the same about the tool users. So you yeah. can't say, hey, okay. of only. oh, that's way harder. You know, you got to be really skilled. I feel mm -hmm. if you use tools, that doesn't mean you need less skills. I'm going to give you an example. The multitasking with tools the leash, the clicker, the collar, you know, using the foot on top of that. Hey, that's where I see a lot of people fold and struggle and not make it, right? Because that's when it gets really, really hard. So I wouldn't say it's easier or harder. It is different. It's like, is being a vegan hard? I think, try it, you know? <laughs> I've tried it. it. To me, it was hard. But once you're in it, you're like, hey, yeah, I can, I can do right. this. Right? So it's just a yeah. mindset. If you're like, I don't want to touch your leash. All right, for whatever reason, whatever your goal, or maybe the government doesn't allow you, doesn't allow any tools, any prongs, any, and because I, I personally really believe if you can't use a prong on a knee collar, you shouldn't be using chokes instead because that's not really going to do 
you know, the best thing for you. So if I would have to make that choice because the government kind of makes you, puts you in that position, I would take it serious and I would wrap my head around, okay, what will it take now? What will it take that I need to change on my vision and my priorities in the training development to make sure that I won't be depending on these tools? But because I can, and because I've already developed myself a lot in using tools, for me, it's really hard to then just abandon everything because mm-hmm. using tools is also a craft that takes time. Yeah. It's not just something like, hey, got this. Sure. The push of the button is the easy part, right? That's just what everybody can do. What goes before it, what goes, you know, during it, like what happens, what your ana- analysis uh, means to you, how you see things, what too much, too low, all that kind of stuff, it requires a lot also. So I wouldn't say easier, but it's hard to abandon a craft once you've already mastered that one and then go into a complete different one. I mean, that kind of uh, thinking is, is, I mean, that kind of change is really hard for people. And that's why we also see the traditional methods, you know, always staying what they are because it's hard for people to go away from something that they've achieved success with. And it's no different for me. Even I'm not like a traditional trainer. It is hard for me also to go only positive. So yeah. what I like to do is I like to use a lot of the smart techniques that are in there, a lot of good thinking, a lot of proactive stuff, right? So you got to think before this happens, when, because when this happens, you don't remember, you don't have a tool to, to stop it, okay? And not having a tool to stop it can be very scary because you're used right. to, oh, the dog doesn't doesn't come when I recall it? No problem. Let's just, you know, use a flexi, the brown, all the kind yeah. of stuff, you know? Hey, that's something different, right? So you got to be really prepared. One second. <laughs> Me, just one second. I gotta, yeah. I gotta, gotta open a juice box. Yeah. Well, what? <laughs> All right. Well, how many kids do you have? I got one. One. <laughs> yeah, one. She she trains with the Malinois now and then, but you know the high drive ones, the the fi- feisty feisty ones. Yeah. That got her off a little bit because they nip at you, they bite you, they bite yes. your clothes. And there's like, yeah. if I come with a Malamar puppy, she's like, before she used to love them. Now, <laughs> not so much anymore because of that reason, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah I should have protected her better because, but sometimes you think, hey, puppies are right. But then it kind of gets its, you know, craziness all of a sudden and it yeah. starts nipping and biting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, that's you know, that's when you gotta be on the watch a little bit, especially with the young kids and the sharp teeth. Because it's not yeah. like they want to hurt the kid, but they're so sharp, those teeth. Yeah, they mm-hmm. they open the skin really easy. They rip clothes off the bodies, they do all that kind yep. of stuff. So uh, yeah, I, I get that question thing. all the time. Like, what how do I how do I get my kid my Malinois to stop biting my kids? I'm like, yeah. don't let your Malinois around your kid. Yeah. You know, like like a toddler, a little baby shouldn't be around a Malinois puppy unsupervised. Yeah, like, but hey, look, the first thing, the first thing I would say, you want to do it, put a leash on him. Oh, mm-hmm. training only positive. You can't just put a leash on the puppy because then right. it's not positive only. And that was also my big objection when I was talking to positive only. But you use yeah. a leash, right? You use a leash, and the re- leash is wrapped, attached around a ne- dog's neck. How are you only positive then? Makes right. no sense, right? Yeah. So I think if you if you are going to tell people you are, you got to be all in positive. Like, right, not, I agree. oh, but I still use the flexi. I still use that. All right, yeah. stop it. Yeah, it's not mm-hmm. positive. Man. Yeah, you not positive it only. because it can't cross that boundary. So, but that said, look, wrap your head around it, how hard it is to, yeah. under, to know, to realize there's no tool that can, that can save you because you're just, you just promise yourself you're not going to use it. Yeah. I can, yeah. I, one of the, I, one of I the, think that's one of the super best impressive. trainers out there, just you know, by thinking, by you know, also out of box thinking. I, I really like her, you know. Mm-hmm. And these people usually don't get a platform because unless you already made it to 100,000 followers or plus, people yeah. are not really going to pay attention, right? If it's bad camera work, let's face it, I've seen many, many really nice videos. Yeah. Bad camera work, you know, when it goes viral, when a big channel takes the video and post it themselves yeah. just, just, just borrow the video right and they post it there's a lot of big channels like that also yeah mm-hmm. that, but then it's really hard to to actually track back to who the original poster is yeah and sometimes they're in china i've seen some incredible you know videos from china yeah uh-huh. they're not going to educate us let's face it they make a video it's entertaining but they're not going to educate us right. and then that said there's a language barrier 
And who wants to be educated by Chinese people, right? You still also have this stereotype of, oh, well, Chinese people, don't they eat dogs, right? How, yeah. Don't they feed dogs bad and stuff like that? Still today. And mm -hmm. I don't really know where they stand with that kind of stuff. They make amazing videos, but we don't, we don't see like the whole picture on how these dogs right. live. And, you know, right. it's still a little bit like, yeah, it's nice. But I think you know, somebody asked me, where do you think the best trainers live? And I do think it's in China, to be honest, because mm -hmm. I've seen phenomenal training in China, really. Yeah. How? Because some students I have in China, they send me private videos. And I was like, I've never seen anything like this. Really? Nice. Where do you... First of all, tell me where you got this dog and where you were trained and stuff like that. Then they, they told me where they got the dog. It was from Belgium. I was like, oh, well, I actually know this dog. Yeah, I actually know this dog. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, it's with you now? Okay, okay, nice. <laughs> and so they had the quality of the dogs. And then they, they got the training. They figured it out. And, you know, through my channel, through other people's channel and training, and they figure it out. And they're disciplined like nobody else. They got so much yeah. discipline got so much focus and when these people get passionate and they put those things together they they do these crazy things crazy things yeah, the limit. TikTok, you're a tiktok person i'm not that much on tiktok but what kind of viral videos do you see of melon was it's usually from china or u.s um it's, it's actually yeah it's probably usually from china they have those um those really amazing videos of, of you know the dogs climbing the walls vertically or or jumping up onto a tree you know what looks to be like 15 or 20 feet in the air to grab a tug and um those videos are are a sensation on tiktok and you know anywhere else yeah, that, that it can yeah, be posted. Exactly. They're, huge exactly. videos. they're really yeah. they're amazing to watch yeah, there's yeah. actually a guy on tiktok that does um he has a melon one he does these videos oh i wish i could remember his channel name to say but he does these videos where um he puts his Malinois in different scenarios and he'll do like this elaborate scene where like he's all, you know, zip tied in the back of a trunk or in some abandoned building and his dog has to go and rescue him and like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And it's, it's like, holy cow. Yeah. It's this, like a movie. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can I can warm you guys up also. We're, we're also in process. I showed you a little clip earlier. Yeah. It's movie. so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna definitely shock you guys also with something out of the box I that we, we're not gonna see coming. So uh, yeah, we got something nice for you. It's gonna be a long, longer play video, so it's gonna be not because how it's many, how, how much time can you put on TikTok? It's ten minutes three now, minutes. right? What? How three, much? Three minutes. Oh, three minutes. I heard they were gonna change it to ten minutes. Are they? To, yeah, to compete with YouTube. That'd be great. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, they want to compete with YouTube, so they're gonna allow longer videos. You know, it's funny it. because um, TikTok already outperforms YouTube in watch time hours every month. Really? Yes. Wow. Yep. It. It's it's crazy. TikTok I is think. huge. Yeah. Like, it's got like you, I keep telling everybody, tell me no here in the chat. We <laughs> want to see more right. yeah. TikTok videos from Nino. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the five videos I have on there is not going to cut it. Yeah, I got <laughs> I got twenty seven followers. People, anybody want to jump on board? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, STSK9 TikTok. Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm looking at it. Um, I told you, uh, it's just a whole lot of work. I mean, you run some social yeah. media accounts yourself, which brings us to one of your other great initiatives is you decided to make a Discord, working doc Discord, and do a free online event. Well, kind of free. So tell us a little bit about that, please. Uh, so yeah. you invited me also. I'm going to be one of the speakers. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um so it's kind of a passion project, right? Um, the reason that I that I decided to do this is because when I first came into the Malinois community and I was looking like so many of us do at different online trainers, um, uh, you know, content I could watch online, videos, that kind of thing, I had a hard time actually identifying who was worth their salt. Because you'll see an Instagram account that might have, you know, a hundred thousand followers and it's this shiny, you know, account where they have all these followers and all this, and it's like, they're actually really not great trainers. They just have a good Instagram account. And it's hard to identify that when you're trying to break into this, who should I be watching? Like, like it's, it's impossible to know. I wish that something existed when I was starting out where someone could point me to here's, you know, here's some trainers that you should really be paying attention to 
these are masters of this craft. You want to watch these, these people. Mm -hmm. Um, where do you, you know, it didn't exist. So I thought, you know what, let's start this group. Let's start a discord. And the reason I did it on discord instead of Facebook or anywhere else is because it's a private server and we don't have to deal with any nonsense over there. There's no (laughs) policing. There's no, you know, yeah. yeah, Like you don't have to worry about any of that over there. Mm -hmm. Um, so we did it, we did it there. And then we're hosting this event, the, the online event that we're doing this um, May 7th is the date for it. All right, May 7th. Registration is not yet open. We're still setting that up, but it's going to be very soon. Mm-hmm. Um, there will be, an, so, so it's workingdogdiscord.com. There's a whole panel of amazing trainers. And these are trainers that, are experts at their craft that you should be paying attention to. All right. Um, Can can we drop some of the names that are coming? We've got, we've got you, of course, we've got Nino, we've got Dave Croyer, we've got um, Jerry Bradshaw, Cameron Ford, um, Courtney Robbins. We've got Jonas Black. We've got Danny Wells, Jackie Zakar, Julie Starbuck. Um, We just have, and Larry is Larry also coming? Larry Crone, yep. yep. Larry's going to be there. Um, did I miss anybody? I think that's it. I don't think I missed anybody. I, if I, I if I did, I'm so sorry. Um, but just this great panel of speakers who yeah. are very, very worthy and deserving of our time and attention, and who are going to be here to give us an hour of their time. Yeah, and it's going to be an all day long virtual dog training conference where all these people are going to be in the same space for this one day only. Um, mm-hmm. It's really, really exciting. And I love the, the idea of being able to create a community around trainers that have kind of been vetted, so to speak, right? Like not all these people have a fancy Instagram account. You're not even gonna have heard of all of these people necessarily, but I guarantee you, you wanna be watching these trainers. You wanna be paying attention. They are putting out quality content and great information and you, just don't hear about them. You just don't know about them because not everybody is is necessarily great at growing a huge social media. Some people don't have the time. They're running full time businesses, and you know it's just it's a lot to do, and um, and it can get in the way from people finding your content online. So here's a way yeah. to to find and highlight these very very deserving trainers and yeah. of, of working dogs specifically. So uh, c- can you check this, um, Alligator Mom? Like, uh, is, is this what also uh, leads to that? Yeah, this so we have a Facebook yep. page. Okay, yep. yeah. Yep, right. that's the Facebook page. Um, but the website is just workingdogdiscord.com. Okay. So Let the me... best thing to do is go to workingdogdiscord.com and go join the Discord. Um, the working dog... There, workingdogdiscord.com. Yeah. Um, if you go and join the Discord, then you will be getting access to a big bucket of 500 free registrations. Um, like this uh, initial... working dog Discord? Yep, that's it. Okay. So the initial plan was to try to keep the event free for everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm brand new at all of this. And so in my naivety, I didn't realize how expensive these online virtual platforms really were, (laughs) they cost a lot of money. Um, And so I paid up front for 500 people to come Mm -hmm. for free. If you want to get in on that free bucket, go to the working dog discord. That's where those registrations are going to be dropped for you guys. So be be paying attention. Um, But after that, it's going to be a very small fee. It's, it's literally, I think it's like $12 and it's just a fee that's passed straight along from the, from the virtual hosting platform for your attendance. Um, but wow, talk about, I mean, value. I mean, it's, it's just an incredible number of people who have incredible information to share. Oh, yeah. um, and there's going to be vendor booths and all kinds of stuff. It's really going to feel like the, the goal is to make it feel like you're actually attending a dog training conference. Um, I- you know, there will be game of your home. Yeah. giveaways, polls. I mean, all kinds of stuff is in the works and it's going to be a really awesome, awesome day. And I hope that you all are interested in this and get behind it because I would love to see this project evolve 
um, and turn into an annual event. That's that's the goal. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. So, uh, yeah, that's some initiative. I mean, uh, that's quite honorable that you go out there and there's nothing to really gain for you except bringing a, you know, a bunch of trainers together and inviting people for free. You try to have them all for free, but yeah, a lot of money. So not the first 500. So people should definitely go check it out. And um, yeah, that's, that's really nice of you that you want to do this. I'll jump right on board. Just like, Hey, that's a great initiative. I think, yeah, people need yeah. education and uh, yeah. If, if they want some free advice, I mean, like you said, uh, you know, YouTube is the only channel these days that offers that kind of advice, but yeah, you don't really know what you're getting. So, um, yeah, I think you froze up. Oh, you're back. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I th I'm very happy that you wanted to do this. I want to thank you for this opportunity that people are getting to just stay home and from the comfort of their homes, they can just visit yeah. some stores and, and yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, nice. Well, initiative. thank thank you for being a part of it. Honestly, like I was I was actually really surprised um just because of it. I was actually really surprised that so many people were um like, "Hey, yeah, you know, absolutely. I'll come speak. Sign me up. I think that sounds great." I was mm -hmm. so pleased that so many amazing trainers um are are clearly willing to to give back to their community. Um, there's mm -hmm. nothing in it for any of the trainers. So for you guys to, to give an hour of your time away to all of these folks is just, you know, thank you guys so, so much. I know that not everybody's going to have a chance to thank you that comes to the event, but I know that we all, appreciate you guys all agreeing to come together. All right. So uh, before we close down, what tip would you give people? You just mentioned it. You know, a lot of these good trainers are struggling to get out some some content that people really enjoy, even though they're really good trainers. Uh, what would you tell people here or that are struggling to get more interaction, engagement with their channels? Um, is there anything you can think of that you would recommend? Like, is it always because if you, of course, you can go Google it, how to get followers on TikTok and Instagram. Yeah. And it's always the same thing. You got to be entertaining. You got to be educating. You got to tell a story. You got to, but what is it that you feel from, from your gut feeling of, you know, what would you recommend people that are struggling to get their channel up a little bit? What would you tell them? Um, you know, honestly, I think that a lot of people want to believe that if they just post good training content, that they will come, right? The mm -hmm. viewers will find yeah. themselves to you. And, you know, that's, that's ideal. That would be great. But that's also just not the way social media works. And we all know that. I think that there's three ways to be successful on social media and you have to build your social media yeah. build an audience before you can start pushing an initiative or or trying to to share mm -hmm. um more valuable content in that sense or the things you want to do and that's whether you like it or not that's just the nature of the game that's just what social media is so building um you know posting things that are either funny um strike emotion or are inspiring. I think mm -hmm. those are the three um, types of, you know, pieces of content that you need to be focusing on yeah. building stories mm -hmm. or content or posts around that. And to do that in our niche of training and dogs and working dogs is no easy task. It's yeah. hard to create content that inspires or checks off one of those three boxes around dog training. So it's, it's not easy, but, um, but it is possible. And I think that we have to, to just get over the idea that our good training content is going to bring people our way. Cause it's, it's just not, there's tons of yeah. phenomenal yeah. trainers. Let's face have it. No Let's social face media it. presence. I mean, it's, you got to make the video, but you have to edit the video. You got to make some captions. You got to make yeah. the, create the story around it. So can you imagine that a lot of people are just good dog trainers? They're not good in editing or making videos or, yeah. you know, coming up with these ideas, but they try to run a business. Mm -hmm. Any tips for them? It's hard. I mean, honestly, I would say yeah. hire someone. Yeah. Hire someone yeah. to do it. You'd be surprised yeah. how many uh, young folks out there are trying to get into this type of field and, and marketing and social media and that kind of thing and mm -hmm. who are hungry for this kind of work. They would love to get your login, you know, to Instagram and take over your account for you and, and work on creating that kind of stuff. So I would mm -hmm. say hire someone to come in and, and do something like that. If you really want to grow your social media account, you don't have the time or maybe you just don't have, you're not like a super creative person, um, you know, have somebody else come in and do it. It's, it's always okay 
to, to put the right people in place. You know, if you're not good at something, that's okay. I'm not good at a lot of things either, but what I'm not good at, I will go find someone who is yeah. good at that thing and bring them in to be on the, on the team. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. So uh, there are people already struggling. Maybe it wasn't completely clear. So let's just get that out of the way. Um, somebody here was saying, uh, here, do you need Discord? Do you have to join that group? Uh, she said she can't register yet. Uh, so, yeah, registration is not yet open. Oh, okay. So yeah, my bad. Watching, because I said yeah. register at workingdoc, uh, discord.com. I already said register now, but sorry. When, oh. when is it open? So, so we're hoping to re to open registration, and it will be a pre-registration to the people in Working Dog Discord only. They get early access to the free tickets, um, and then after we do that, then we'll open it up to the public. So you don't have to be a member of the Working Dog Discord to join. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be, but if you want early access to a bucket of free tickets. And trainers that are going to be there, like yourself and Larry Crone and Courtney mm -hmm. and Jerry and Cameron and all the Dave Croyer, all these people, they're in that working dog discord as well. So it's nice to be able to come into yeah. a space where you can have access to these trainers that you don't really get access to, you know, trying to send them a DM. You're going to get lost in a sea of a thousand DMs and it's not going to be seen. You have a better chance of connecting with one of those trainers um, over, yeah. over there. Yeah. All right. So then I was just reading into Ky Kylie's uh, comment here. So clickbait, she made a parody <laughs> um, when she watched the movie Doc and then went out, out the next day to buy a puppy. And it was her most viewed video. So, yeah. <laughs> Is that what they call clickbait? Is uh, trying to make people believe <laughs> you're doing something, yeah. but not really? So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Click, clickbait amazing. videos are great. That's, that's that one <laughs> that you were talking about where I said, oh, this is my eight eighty thousand yeah. dollars Malinois puppy you know that's clickbaity for sure yeah 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 well it definitely worked so you got my attention <laughs> that's right <laughs> all right so uh all right hey uh, thank you so much you know it's early morning there what time is it right now in nashville you uh it's just it's just 11 o'clock so oh, okay that's all right I'm that's all right you got the whole day in front of you well here yeah. it's uh it's evening time so we gotta take care of a lot of dogs and you do also i guess so yeah. well, I thank you so much for being on this channel. Thank you. So, thank you. Yeah, I was, awesome. This was so Look. fun and exciting. I could do this all night. Last time I had to stop myself after three hours, but now I have some stuff to do. <laughs> I have some appointments, so I got I to gotta make myself stop. Yeah. I actually love talking about dogs and, and meeting nice people like yourself. You know, I met a lot of nasty people, but I also meet a lot of nice people. You see, that's how life goes. <laughs> you know, that's how your channel runs also. It's, you know, you get nasty comments and you get good comments and you just keep going. Yeah. So uh, don't let yourself be uh, discouraged by the nasty, bad people. You know, every video I put out there, rather it be positive only or with tools, or a puppy, if it's a puppy, because a puppy doesn't wear any tools, they're saying, it's disgusting. You're making this puppy do all this stuff. Let it be a dog, right? <laughs> uh, using tools, of course, yeah. you know, they get nasty. You don't use tools, you're like, you're an idiot or whatever, you know, it just it doesn't work. So whatever you do, it's never going to be good for everybody. So don't yeah, let it get you. So, uh, yeah, we'll just keep going. And uh, right. we'll see each other soon again at the yeah. Discord, obviously. And uh, guys, if you want to follow Maligator Mom, TikTok, yeah, that's your main channel. Also yeah. Instagram and the face. Are you on Facebook also still? I'm on Facebook and YouTube. I have a YouTube channel and as well. All called Maligator Mom. Yep. All the all same. Right. Maligator Mom on all the channels. It's easy to remember. All right, guys, you should follow her. She's really nice. Uh, she's got great videos. So uh, thank you again and have a great day. Okay. Thank you. You too. All right. All right. All right. See you guys later. Bye.